pleasant good day to all of you who enjoy our content and have returned to our channel to see what it is that we're saying today. As those of you who watch Empress Radio this morning would have learned, like myself, on Thursday, Martelt and Melody returns back to court. And based on what Empress Radio announced this morning, it seems as though Thursday is a day for the trial. And so I decided that it's only fitting that we explore some poignant sections of the Alabama law as it relates to custody. Um, I, I hope most of you would have watched the first video where we talked about child abuse and where we try to explain the duty of a parent, a guardian, a neighbor, an enemy, just about anybody and certain public authorities, the duty that they have to ensure that once they believe there is child abuse or suspected child abuse, that they have a duty to report. And if they fail to exercise that duty, that they could be held liable with a fine and um, imprisonment. And so today, let us look at what is custody. The purpose of this channel, as its name says, get legit. So let's get legit with just about every aspect of our lives, even when it comes to understanding the various legislations that governs us. So we start off, we have here, as you can see, a picture of Melody and Martel, courtesy of Empress Radio, in which Empress Radio has gotten some information as it relates to when they return to court. If you notice, I put win in quotes because really, when it comes to family court, there isn't anything such as a win, no sides win. It's a matter of the court making a decision that they believe is in the best interest of the children. And in this case, we're not talking about one, two, three children. We're talking about four. Yes, all four children. And normally in cases like these, these children would have what we call a guardian ad litem who is an attorney. And that guardian's duty is to ensure the best interest of those children. And so that person, he or she, will go about their duty by speaking to the mother, doing a report on the mother, report on the father, doing what we call a home visit, where they go to the home and see how the home is kept, see who all lives in that home and interview those persons as well. And so while this matter has been played out on social media, I thought it only fitting that we discuss it because a lot of our viewers could be going through the very same thing. And so it's an opportunity for us to discuss these issues and help each other. So we start off first with what is custody. And as you can see, we know the Alabama law. This information I would have received, um, gotten off the internet. And so as I scroll down, you're going to see where I give credit to where I got the information from so that we are not plagiarizing here. Alabama Code 2611 says, Custody is a legal responsibility for the care and supervision of a minor child, including the power to make major decisions about the child. Unlike other states where a minor child is a child who is less than 18 years old, in Alabama, a minor child is a child who is less than 19 years old. So what that is saying is that whoever gets custody of these children, if the matter concludes on Thursday, that person will have physical care of those children until they're 19 years of age. And um, when I say physical care, I'm going to explain what that means as we go down. Alabama Code 35151 says when a court issues a custody order, it will generally address it in two parts. And it deals with legal custody and physical custody. So for those of you who might be asking, hmm, what is legal custody? What is physical custody? Well, the term physical custody refers to the parent who actually has primary physical responsibility and control of the child. Normally, the parent who has physical custody is the parent with whom the child lives most of the time. When one parent has sole physical custody, the other parent usually gets visitation with the child. So basically what this is saying is that whoever gets physical custody 
if this matter concludes on Thursday, and I'm saying the word if because I don't believe it will conclude on Thursday. Normally, these matters take time. And if it's the first hearing, hence, because um, prior we had a report in that Martel wasn't ready in whatever, whatever they mean by that, which means basically it's saying the trial has not yet begun. And so if that is the case, it is highly unlikely that this matter will conclude on Thursday. There are several aspects of a custody matter. So you're probably going to have the parents take the stand, give evidence if that is the case. Thereafter, you're going to have a guardian appointed and that person will then do their own due diligence to ensure that these children, whoever they, they live with for the most part of the time, is indeed the proper parent who is um, desirable, the parent who has the responsibility, the parent who is responsible to have these children on a full-time basis. And then the other parent who does not have physical custody, that parent will then get visitation. When I start, when I stop reading, it says also the parent who has sole physical custody could receive child support from the other parent. That is important because I know a lot of YouTubers and persons have been commenting saying that they believe that is the only reason why Martel is taking Melody to court and is now seeking sole custody. As you would have heard Melody on a previous um, YouTuber, she was explaining that they already have joint custody and joint custody means both of them already share in the raising of those children, share in having the children at their homes. And for those of us who follow Love and Huntsville Marriage, Love and Marriage Huntsville, we will know that Martel gets the kids one week, Melody has them the other week, and that's how they do it in, in, at interval throughout. And so at this stage, what Martel is seeking is for the children to live with him. So it says here, joint physical custody refers to when physical custody is shared by the parents in such a way that the child has frequent and substantial contact with each parent, although not necessarily equal time with each parent. Parents may have joint physical custody while one parent has sole legal custody. And so the parent with sole legal custody is the one, as we said, sole physical custody. That would be the person who the child resides with most of the time. And um, as we gone through, we said that there's two things the court will look at, legal custody and physical custody. So here we looked at physical custody in the sense of joint physical custody, what is physical custody on its own, and what is sole custody physical custody. So sole physical custody, where one parent gets the children, they live with that one parent, and the other parent gets visitation. Then the parent who the children lives with, that parent gets child support for those children because they're living with that parent. And then the other joint physical custody, that is where the two parents have physical share custody of the child. So they are shared between the parents at a substantial contact, one parent has frequent and substantial contact with the children. Both parents, not one, my apologies. And so that is the difference between physical custody. Now, as we go down, what is legal custody? The term legal custody refers to which parent has the primary responsibility and authority to make major decisions for the child's life, including but not limited to education, health care, and religion. There are two types of legal custody. So the two types of legal custody that you have, you have sole legal custody, which refers to when one parent has these rights, and you have joint legal custody. And that is when both parents have equal rights and responsibilities for these major decisions concerning the child. And so we don't know unless some of you may know and I ask you all to comment whether or not what Martel is seeking is joint legal custody or sole legal custody as well as joint physical custody or sole physical custody. I believe from what Mel said in her interview, she alluded to sole, sole 
physical custody. Now, when it comes to sole legal custody, where one parents get to exercise all the rights, when it comes to making major decision for the child, then that I believe we don't have that information as yet. And as you can see, it says legal custody, it says uh, they're responsible for making major decisions about the child's life, including but not limited. And that means it includes education, healthcare, and religion, but it's not only limited to those three things. So it could be other things such as where the child lives. It could be, you know, in terms of religion, do I want the child to practice the Catholic faith or the Anglican faith? So it all depends on what major decisions you're looking at. It could be hospital, the child is sick, which hospital we the, that parent would then decide the children should go. So for us in, in, in social media, we might look in at this and say, okay, it's entertaining. We, we hear what is happening in this family, but it is a very serious matter because what it will do and the consequences it will have on those children will be life altering. And so based on what we've seen, both of them currently are exercising joint physical and joint legal custody of those children. So what Martel is seeking is sole physical custody. When it comes to sole legal custody, no, I haven't seen any papers, so I really don't know. And I have not heard Melody speak on the extent of his application. Um, so I would go further. We look at what is visitation. And for most of you, you might already know what is visitation. And it says here, visitation is the right to spend time with your child. Judges usually grant some form of visitation rights to parents who do not have physical custody. And so let's say this matter concludes on Thursday, which I doubt for reasons I explained above. Then Melody, if she loses, will have a uh, visitation with her children, which means she will see her children every so often. And the everyday scene and dealing and making decisions will be that of Martel. So for those of us in the, um, in the social media looking at this, we could kind of tell more or less who we believe is the appropriate parent to have physical, legal custody, physical and legal custody of those children when it comes to making major decisions, when it comes to the parent that we believe is stable, and when it comes to the parent that we believe will exercise his parental responsibility in such a way that has the children's best interests at heart. And some of the things that we can look at right now as we have seen played out, is decisions taken by the father. Such decisions will have major consequences, especially when those four children get their garden ad litem because each child will have a garden ad litem, an attorney, representing their interests. And so you're going to see things such as what we see with Ariane played out as it relates to decision-making of the parent, that will have a bearing on the, the decision as it relates to who gets custody. When we look at uh, Martel's stability as a parent, does he have a home? Whether or not that home has bedroom for all four children, what the living condition will be like, who those children will be interacting with, whether or not he has a stable relationship and that person will be in those, those children's lives, whether or not those children will continue to live in Alabama or they will relocate to some other state. So those are some of the things that will be looked, in, be, that will be looked at. And of course, we would want the court to examine in totality how granting sole custody to one parent, be it sole physical custody, be it sole legal custody to one parent over the other, will have ramifications on those children. But like I said, the court will make a decision, whatever decision it makes, that it believes is in the best interest of those children. And so as you can see, what we have here is some of the pros and cons of getting custody other. Um, normally, when you make a bring a matter to the court, first of all, I don't see it as a win-win situation because right away, you're not the one making the decision. It is the courts making the decision. And hopefully parents are of such maturity level that both of them could do what Melody and Martel already would have already done. Come up with a solution as to how we're going to co-parent these children by virtue of you get them one week, I have them the other week. The reason, as we've seen Martel put and the post and the lead, as to why he's seeking joint, I mean, physical, soul, physical custody, as it complains about babysitting, them having 24 babysitting, then it is, if the court would then look at who those babysitters are, whether or not those persons were suitable persons, how often Melody would have left those children with whomever babysitter, 
And the fact that the reality of the world is Melody is, is for all intents and purposes, a single mother, divorced mother, and so she has to provide for those children. I believe, I don't believe any court will say a mother, you need to sit home and watch those kids and not earn because she has to work. And that is the reality. So basically, if you look at this case, what you could, you could demise from it or surmise from it, my apologies, is that Martel is saying, as mother, Mel, as a mother, Melody should not be working. But he needs to look at the flip side of that. Then if Melody is not working, then he should be paying child support. So then the question is, is he in a position to do so? So for this video, let's just look at everything that we've looked at. Joint custody, sole custody. And so for now, I end this um, this communication with you all. I ask you all to like, subscribe, and share the channel so that more people could learn about these things. And as I look at it, bear in mind, I'm looking at it from the perspective of Alabama. But when it comes to family law, I believe you just need to look at your particular state and see what governs. It shouldn't be too different, but let's just focus. If you're in New York, you look at New York State. And there are several um, sites you could go on on Google, same site that I've been on, and you could find this information so you could educate yourselves, equip yourself. If you're someone going through it or if you're someone thinking of bringing an application yourself, then look at it, learn, so that we could all learn from Melody's situation. So for now, I ask you all to subscribe to my channel. It's a young channel. We're growing. I believe we are at like, what, seven subscribers? So... My YouTubers, those of you who like my content, I ask that you just like, share, subscribe to our channel as we try to grow. And this is the kind of content we intend to bring where we look at the legal aspect of whatever we see happening in these internet streets to borrow from what Miss April Butcher would say. So again, thank you.